Hey, Evans. Special request time. I got a uh, message from SoCal Kev a, a good while back, and and I've been kind of putting this off for a little bit, trying to get all my stuff together, make sure I, I double checked information and put it all together, make sure I had everything right, and uh, so far everything is checked out. This is the story of Annalisa uh, Michelle, which is uh, a young woman who is German and a devout Catholic who lived from September 21st, 1952 to July 1st, 1976. People thought she was possessed by demons. Why? Because she said so. Um, at the age of 16, she started um, having these uh, psychiatric disturbances and all the way up to her death at the age of 23, just short of 24, uh, she continued to have these things. Now, here's the deal. She went to the doctors, and the doctor said, yeah, you're epileptic. You've been having seizures. And they, you know, prescribed her some medications for this. In 1968, at the age of 16, um, she was diagnosed with, uh, as an epileptic in uh, Wurzburg. Trying, uh, as I try to give her treatment, her situation did not improve. Now, in a previous video, I talked about how frontal lobe epilepsy will induce religious visions, and there's another video about this, and you can look it up. It's, it's pretty, pretty interesting, uh, and, it, and it shows how it, by stimulating the brain with various um, external stimuli, you can induce religious um, visions, so to speak, into people. Uh, and it kind of shows where this type of um, uh, hallucination can occur. But anyway, this woman, having grown up a devout Catholic, was convinced that this was all about a religious thing and that she was possessed, and she wanted the Catholic Church to uh, exercise her. She begged and pleaded, and they said no. Um, her parents then went to multiple priests and they all said no. See now, in order for them to do this and, and declare her that she requires exorcism, the law there said that they had to have proof that she was um, possessed. I don't know exactly how you prove something like that, but um, along comes this uh, a uh, local parish priest, Father Ernst Alt, who was a specialist an exorcism, and he decided that in fact she was uh, possessed, and he got uh, Josef Stong to um, to back him up and approve this whole thing. And he and Stong ap appointed Pastor Arnold Renz to carry out this uh, traditional rites of exorcism with the help of Father Alt. So, from 1968, all the way up to 1975, she carries on and she's having severe trouble with this whole epilepsy thing, and she's having some bad issues. But she's alive. However, at this point, in 1975, they said, uh, okay, we're going to cut off the, uh, the medication because obviously this is the work of demons. And 11 months later, she dies. They stopped this medical treatment and um, again 11 months later she dies and uh, this whole thing was carried out secretly in the bedroom of her parents home in one hour sessions. July 1st 1976 she dies in her sleep. Uh, coincidentally enough she had predicted that she would be liberated from the demons on this day. Now anyone who's known enough old people who die You can cause yourself to die too. Um, I recall in my uh, in my wife's family, her grandmother was uh, in the hospital for very non-lethal situations. It was just a you know issue with her her leg was swelling. Um, they predicted she would go home in a few days, but she kept getting worse and worse and worse, and they really couldn't figure out why. She kept getting worse and worse, and uh, eventually her um, her husband, seeing her there just grieving, said, if you need to go, 
go. And she died that night. She let go. And this is very common. If you are in that state where you've reached the point that your your, your body, your mind is, is ready to, to stop, if you convince yourself that it's time to stop, you can make it stop. Um, you hear about some people who say that they, you know, if you die in, your, in a dream, you'll die in real life. It's along that lines. Although I can tell you by experience, I've uh, I've been uh, shot, fallen off of cliffs, and many other things that uh, I've supposedly died in my dreams. And I, well, here I am. So that's not entirely true. Uh, you have to first convince yourself that that will in fact happen. But anyway, that's a whole other whole other issue. So she predicted she would die this day, and at midnight she did. Um, initially, they said that it was all because of a drug that she was taking called uh, Tegretol, um, or Tegretol, I'm not sure exactly, T-E-G-R-E-T-O-L, which uh, lowers the levels of consciousness and uh, loss of ability to respond properly to external stimuli, uh, along with fever and uh, hypoxemia which is lack, lack of oxygen, oxygen in the blood. And she had all these symptoms, so they figured, it, they figured that the cause of her death was suffocation. Uh, but the plot thickens. The autopsy comes back and says that she, was, she died of malnutrition and dehydration, which was the result of almost a year of semi-starvation -star during the rites of exorcism. So off to court we go, and they determined that uh, her death could have been prevented even a week before she died. They charged uh, Pastor Alt, Father Rents, and the parents as well uh, with negligent homicide for failing to call a, make a medical doctor. This uh, trial started uh, March 30th, 1978. Um, they claimed that the uh, exorcism was legal according to the German constitution because it was an unrestricted exercise of their religious beliefs. So if your religion says that you should pick someone else's nose and then feed it to a small child, apparently that's okay because that's your religious belief. Uh, it's perfectly okay if your religion says that uh, you should um, eat everyone's cherry pie in the entire United States because God said so. Whatever. Anyhow, moving on. Uh, they were found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to, are you ready for this, six months probation. They killed this woman and they get six months probation. That's not the worst of it. Not only did they only get six months probation, but that's not even what the prosecution was asking for. The prosecution wanted less. They just thought that they would be fined. And that the parents would be found guilty but not punished. The people, of course, wanted more. And that's why this sentence came about. Um, which is, I guess, is good in hindsight. All right. Here's the best part. A Camelite nun from the district of ALLGAU, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, uh, in southern Bavaria, said that she had a vision that revealed to her that the daughter's body was still intact. And this would authenticate the supernatural character of the case. So they exhumed the body, and guess what? She shows the normal signs of decomposition that you would expect in a body having been buried for that long. There's all kinds of supernatural ideas that uh, she haunts German schools and houses and crap like that too now. But the best part is, is that uh, two movies have been made about this. One was a 2006 film uh, in German called Requiem uh, by Hans uh, Christian Schmid. Uh, which was v fairly close to the whole thing, but worse than that was a 2005 movie, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, which many of you may be familiar with, where they changed everything significantly, including the outcome of the court case. But it's based on a true story. <laughs>